curious to, to hear what you think in terms of um, a lot of, again, thinking of culture lag and thinking of how we could implement these things. Uh, there are certain jurisdictions that are way out front mm. in terms of trying to establish the physical landscape that would allow these systems to take place. So one of the more famous ones would be certain parts of Arizona, for example, mm. in the United States, right? And um, they are trying to make sure the physical infrastructure is there to kind of speed through that culture lag. Mm. But it is also interesting, the juxtaposition of a lot of any time an autonomous vehicle hits someone or hits anything, mm. it's it's global news, yeah. right? So what what is that juxtaposition and why is it news just because there's an accident? One, I think the nature of media now is that, you know, people want to see headlines, mm. right? And so I think there's something exotic still about, hey, AI, even though, or autonomous driven vehicle, even though statistically probably still safer, uh, even now than the average driver. Yeah, because th they'll be quick to point out, these cars have been driving around for thousands of hours. Miles, right? right? Yeah, thousands well, kilometers, of miles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, and we don't report on every accident that happens. Right. Um, or non-accident. Or non-accident right. that happens. Yet, um, if uh, a, a vehicle that's been driven so long but has one accident, just because it's autonomous driven, now it's, a, it's an issue. So uh, I think there's a bit of a, a media uh, frenzy around autonomous driven vehicles, partly because it's a bit sexy right now, and partly because uh, people are not sure what it is and what, what's gonna happen. I, I do think the Arizona example is interesting because definitely there are pockets of uh, geographies in different places in the world. So in the United States, you mentioned Arizona, but you know, if you go to Silicon Valley now, you know, you see Google Waymo yeah, vans the Google everywhere, campus. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's a bit of that. I think outside of the United States, one place that's really interesting or been at the forefront of this is Japan, mm. which has instituted at the national level a series of legislation to allow autonomous driven vehicles and, and even uh, trucks in the next few years. Yeah. And so they're quickly trying to build up the technological infrastructure as well as the physical infrastructure to allow these kind of uh, vehicles to, to operate more effectively and efficiently. Yeah. And so I think that's an important piece. And I think once you have kind of uh, national and local leaders behind it, then the regulatory landscape will change pretty rapidly around that. And once that happens, then insurance will change, uh, you know, kind of the ideas of liability will change, um, and, and, and those kind of processes will, will start developing. So, so let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. So, so again, um, you know, for all of you out there, just, just think for a moment. Let's say that um, you're talking about, um, again, the changing technology and then how culture and, and therefore laws and things have to change and catch up to it. We're talking about regulation. Who would be responsible if there was an accident? So think about that for a moment. Let's say you're walking down the street, you're crossing the street, and all of a sudden an autonomous Uber or delivery vehicle, maybe a, a Google bus or something, um, cuts you off and ends up knocking you down, causing some injury. Think about it for a minute. Like, who would or should be responsible for that? Well, maybe we use that as a, a, a starting point to think about now, if it was just a, a normally driven vehicle mm. without the autonomous uh, powered software driving the, the vehicle, um, who would be responsible? And we would kind of go through a very typical kind of legal analysis. Insurance people would be involved. Uh, police per, uh, officer would show up and do a police report. And you know they would probably attribute some negligence to the driver or to you know maybe if you were jaywalking yeah, different people and, and yeah, there would yeah. be you know different people. I think that would be the initial starting point for you know similar just because the, a vehicle was involved in an accident that had no driver. Yeah, it doesn't um, change. It doesn't the entire change dynamic. The, that entire dynamic yeah. exactly. Now I guess that goes to a more fundamental question though about let's say there's something inherently wrong. Right. with the software right. or with the vehicle itself, the autonomous driven vehicle, then who would be responsible? Would it be the software programmer, the developer who created the AI software or his company, or would it be the car manufacturer that actually uh, owns or manufactured the vehicle, or would it be the owner of the vehicle who's not even driving, yeah. but they actually own maybe a fleet of these vehicles? I don't it does know. make it difficult, yeah. though. I mean, although although it doesn't change things entirely, yeah. there is one big missing component yeah. there. It's the driver, yeah. right? So currently, under tort law, almost everywhere in the world, if a car strikes someone, then the driver is almost universally going to be responsible. Yeah. And so it certainly does limit the number of people that could potentially be responsible. Yeah. yeah, so I think you're right. You know, overwhelmingly, if a driver has an accident with a pedestrian, almost in, in most situations, the driver is going to be held responsible for that. I think the, the, the proxy for that moving forward in autonomous vehicles would be who owns the vehicle. Mm. Now, the thing that will be really interesting, I think, is the next iteration of this, the next, uh, the next version of this, as this advances, is the idea of owning a vehicle will be vastly different yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Uh, it may be owned collectively by a neighborhood, 
or by or a number of family members. It could members. be a utility like electricity. Exactly. Or yeah. it could be a utility or uh, just by a company like that has a fleet of taxis. Right. But similarly, would just have a fleet of... And so, depending on how these assets then are owned, the idea of ownership will also becomes very interesting in how mm -hmm. you hold those people accountable. That, that is why I, I, I hold a little bit of concern in, in this regard because typically the bigger the actor is, the more challenging it is as an individual, uh, you know, someone who's injured, yeah. Uh, the more challenging it becomes yeah. for you to seek redress yeah. and and to to re recover, um, you know, any type of damages from that. So, for example, if it's you versus Uber, that's a significantly power uh, dynamic is very very skewed. different power dynamic yeah. than if it was you know me versus you. Yeah, let's say exactly. right.